So, with Shine, that's actually up a notch to number four this week, and um, this is their eighth week on the countdown. Headbangers ball. Gush, gush. Headbangers Ball hanging out in San Francisco with Metallica. They're dropping from the clouds, I tell you. Now, out of the three years that you spent, I mean, that, that's a long time to just spend on the road. Were there any shows that really stood out? I mean, how many shows did you do in three years? Uh, 302. Was it really 302 shows? Yep. Moscow? Were there... Moscow. And why did Moscow? Moscow is in a place that, you know, um, is known for the big rock and roll crowds, but maybe I'm wrong. It's an amazing vibe that day. There was about 500,000 people. Well, the whole 500,000. Yeah, there was uh, all this energy, man. There was these helicopters and all these like, so what, 15,000 like soldiers and 50, guards was it? Yeah. Flipping around, cool. keeping everybody in line. These helicopters were flying like right over the kids. It was just there was an electricity in the air that day that I don't think we saw it in any of the other shows. It was really cool. What's it got to be? I mean, when you're playing in front of half a million people, after let's say 100,000, do you just <laughs> lose concept of how many people? Because I mean, that's like that's definitely as far as you can see. That's bigger than most cities. Richard, you have white hairs in your beard. <laughs> you have a silver stud under your lip. I know, it's stuck it's there. Look at that. Pop it. Some of that. But about the uh, crowd question. You know, you, you really don't think about it. You think about things like, uh, did you leave the stove on when you left for the airport? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and what about you? I lost count after 256,003. <laughs> I, I started forgetting lyrics and stuff, so... And to stop counting. Right. Well, we're going to be back with more Headbangers Ball. We're hanging out with Metallica in San Francisco. Are we playing a video right now? Oh, we're going to play Enter Sandman Enter the from Metallica. Sandman. What do you give it a boo? You just heard it too many times? I've seen it. Yeah. Have you seen that one? I know what happened at the end. Yeah. Well, in case you don't, and I'm sure you do, don't give it away. watch don't it. Give it away. <laughs> Here's Metallica. I was born in that direction. And you said that when you were a kid, I guess you used to come out here with your dad, or? Yeah, I used to cruise around here with my dad, get seasick, and, uh, you know, look at sharks. Now, I, that's what I heard. I heard this is like great white shark breeding ground out in San Francisco Harbor or something. Yeah, past the Golden Gate, which is in that direction. There's like tons of uh, great white sharks hanging out because that's where they breed. So, you know, if you want to get rid of anyone. I heard they like kids from Cincinnati. Yeah, you know, if you want, ever want to get rid of someone, you just go out there and just never hear from him again. That's right. Okay, we're going to be back hanging out with Metallica. This is a day with Metallica in San Francisco and night. And we'll be back with more Headbangers Ball. Blech. We're called but we'll do it for you, the MTV viewer. <laughs> this is how he stays warm. So you've got you've had some time off right now, right? Yes, many many months. And you kind of getting crazy? Um, uh, having a really crazier, time. crazier. Still, still <laughs> staying busy, you know. Still playing a lot of music and stuff like that. But uh, it's good to be home, man. Now, when you're on the road, is it kind of something? When you've been on, because you were on the road, how long? A couple, couple years. years. Couple I mean, years. pretty much nonstop. And it probably gets to be a point where you say, God, I want some time off. And then when you get off. How long is it before you want to get back out on the road? Um, this time it was a little You're going to make a comment about me saying getting off, weren't you? <laughs> I knew you were. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was, uh, this time everybody had plans, you know, because we had so long to think about it, you know, to get home and do things. A couple people bought new houses, you know, that kind of vibe. You know, you're trying to almost get domesticated. But it took me about six weeks before I, would, I could have the itch to play again. And I could play at any moment right now. I've been, got, you know, different little... Um, music happening side are you doing like stuff. little like tell me some of the side projects you're working on know. right now i don't know I, there's just you know there's a couple different people from different bands around that we've made some noise in my studio like like that uh, andreas from sepultura you know and uh kelly uh, smith from flotsam and uh aaron from laws rocket you know mm -hmm. Dif some different guys from just from the area and then also not just not just heavy music though actually i've been playing a lot more uh, like jazz music and uh Kind of heavy hillbilly type of music, stuff like that. Kinda what would heavy kinda, hillbilly kinda, kinda be? Kinda what would a heavy hillbilly be? Because, see, I, I like a style of music. I call it cow punk, 
which is like taking like Hank Williams and just putting it onto like 78 speed. Yeah, or George Jones and like oh, kicking George it up a bit. Big. Yeah, kicking it up that kind of thing. And also, but also with some guys that have uh, like uh, rockabilly bands around here, and also John Marshall, you know, the place in Metal Church and took James's place when he got burned and all that uh -huh. stuff. We got a band called Long Ass Johnny and the Fabulous Y Tones, and uh, we do like a couple, did a couple gigs at bars here, you right know, on. and uh, doing some you know old Elvis stuff and then uh, ventures and uh, some of our own music too. So you just can't, you like, I guess you got the bug, you always want to be playing live. Even if it's at a right. small club, you just always want to play. It's even better in clubs when we're playing that music, too, because uh -huh. you can just, you know, it's just a good good vibe all around. Real fun music, you know. Right we'll be back with more Metallica, binging and purging in Metallica. And if we get the water gets a little bit rougher, you may some, see some purging sooner than you think. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> and we're in San Francisco hanging out with Metallica. And this is the first time a lot of people have even seen you guys for a while except when you just came hey man i noticed that when you guys because the last time we saw you lars you came by the studio just to talk about the uh video that's out but you didn't really do any other interviews other than that right that was it that was pretty much part of the thing me and jason the thing me and jason did for uh for this contest that was about it keeping a low profile okay now the problem that happens sometimes when you keep a low profile all sorts of weird rumors start. I mean, you were even reading, there's a Metallica Club magazine that even said something about the magazines about that they thought that Jason was dead or something, or again. And and is it is there any is there any is there any truth to that rumor? It always looks white. Very white. <laughs> white as white as man in show business. Okay, but but I mean, I've heard rumors like, oh, you're not going to do any more albums, you're not going to go play. I I don't think these these are the things that the readers that and and people that write to us at the ball ask these things. Great, man. You alone. How about you? Uh huh. Oh yeah, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> but are you got guys, guys Dan, planning on. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm asleep right now. Actually, you can't tell. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're finding hey, out so much. Well, let me tell you who these guys are. This is the PJ and BJ show tonight yeah. on the Headbangers Ball, because these guys entered this big binge and purge contest with Metallica. And uh, which one, BJ? Were you the one that won? You know how I know? Let me tell you something. I just want to tell you something. I'm so bad with names, but see this? I'm very glad that he wrote that on it. That's so he can read it, so he remembers Because it either means that, either means that this guy right here is PJ, or if he's BJ, it means that he's in love with PJ. I haven't figured out which one it actually is. This, this is PJ right here. This is BJ. Now, BJ is the one that won the contest, right? He's real confused right now. No, I'm real confused all the time. You're the one that won the contest, right? Yeah. And how many uh, letters did you send in? 42. 42? Now, the thing that's, that's, that's nice about this time is you guys are, like, real Metallica fans, right? Yeah, we are. So any questions you want to ask him? You got an opportunity right now. Uh, oh, no, not Axel. <laughs> any questions about Metallica? Uh, no, not right now. No? How about you, PJ? How do you, how do you pronounce the instrumental on the second side of Ride the Lightning? The exact pronunciation. Cthulhu, man. I was right. Jesus Christ. Cthulhu. Your friends got to get out more often. Some other things to argue about. Cthulhu. We'll be back with more Headbangers Ball hanging out in San Francisco with Metallica. Stick around. The door. Yay! Now we can jam tonight. We're hanging out with Metallica in San Francisco, obviously. Ah! The Golden Gate Bridge. Wow. Now, for those people that ah, don't know... There it goes. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Dave told us this, this story. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but he came up with this interesting uh, fact about the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, if you take all the cable and unwrap it, and you can wrap it around the world like 200 times, or maybe just two, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Or maybe 200 Different. yards. Something with 200 and cable. Now, we're going to get Ricky on the project right away. Next time they go on the road, they're going to take one of the cables, drag story. it behind the plane. I got a story. My dad was fishing one time at night, and someone jumped off the bridge, landed right by his boat, and he got the gaff out and started gaffing at the body, but it washed away. But he did get his watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of fun stuff we do with Metallica in San Francisco. Stay tuned, and there'll be more fun stuff. Oh, 
Bobby Simpson. Hail Bobby. Check him. That's a, sound like a contest Bobby winner. Bobby Simpson, top of the world. Look at him. Hey, Headbangers Ball hanging out with Metallica and the contest winners. And we were just saying, Gush! that's what we were saying. We were saying here, doing, doing it at home. Dust this place. We're outside of Tommy's joints. And uh, this place is, has some uh, meaning to you. A lot of meaning to me, man. It's the first time I've been back here for seven and a half years since uh, them guys asked me. And what happened Metallica. seven and a half years ago, this restaurant? This fateful night uh, was, uh, you know, back there on Halloween of 86. Uh, and here we were, parked the car right over there, had some beers. And at that time, at that time you uh, were... We just played for a couple hours together, you know? And uh, then they came, well, this is it. I mean, a lot of people... This was the place, this is the place, this is the place that, that these guys beer, told you said, that you were in Metallica. They said, would you like to have a job? And I said, yes, I would. And then after, the, you know, 10 days later, we were touring Japan. Now, does it seem like that long ago? I mean, 1986. Because you said you remember parking right there, yeah, walking right in there. I haven't, I really haven't been back in this, on this block since that time. So it, it is plain as day, you know, really, just like yesterday. But a lot of stuff happened, a lot of stuff has happened between then and now, hasn't it? It's pretty wild. Now, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to go inside and eat. Yeah. We're hanging out in San Francisco with Metallica. We're in front of... Tommy's Joint, an establishment for sandwiches. And if we film outside of the place, I think we get free food or something, something basically like that. Anyways, have you guys set any sort of time reference on like, maybe by this time we'll go into a studio or this time maybe we'll go out on the road or you're kind of just taking it as it goes? We don't know. Uh, 95, we'll probably be in the studio sometime. <laughs> 95, so we got about a year. 94, what, do you have any things that you are supposed to do in 94. I mean, three years nonstop on the road is, is pretty nuts, but I mean, there's so many Metallica fans that ask me, like, as if I would know. You know, what's Metallica doing? When are they gonna go in the studio? When are they gonna go out on the road? Just make stuff up, like we do. Okay, <laughs> so they're gonna go in the studio about 95. 94, you're going to be doing? Mowing my lawn. Mowing the lawn. I, I lied. I don't have a lawn. I'm going to go mow James's lawn. Right. 94, he's going to be doing a gardening, develop a lawn, and then mow it. But 95, a record. Think you'll be doing any right. big live shows in 94? Don't know. Don't know. We're, we'll toss that around a bit. Now, for time off, you like really into hunting, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Like what kind of stuff? Uh, well, around here, there's a lot of duck hunting. There's pig, pheasant, stuff like that. Around here. Yeah, there was one right there. Yeah. <laughs> do a little city hunting. It's always fun. And what about you? Any kind of stuff you do to kind of unwind? I like mowing and gardening. I like to sleep a lot and uh, wake up and uh, yeah, drive things through my lip. Hey. Is this a new thing? Uh, I've had it for about uh, three or four weeks or so. Uh -huh. okay. Well, we're going to be back in San Francisco hanging out with Metallica. Ball. Right now we're hanging out at a studio that a Metallica usually gets together, maybe does a little pre-production here, a little rehearsal here, just jamming like they're probably going to do tonight. And we're hanging out with BJ and PJ, and of course BJ is the uh, winner of the Binge and Purge, Purge with Metallica contest, and PJ is his buddy that he brought with him. And you're from where? what area? Cincinnati, Ohio. You said you sent in about 42 postcards or something like that. Yeah, I sent 42. Now, I heard that you've been getting, like, all sorts of phone calls and stuff lately from other people. Yeah. Trying to buy this yeah. prize or what happened? Uh, I had two girls call me from Cary, Ohio, wanting to buy my tickets, the plane tickets and stuff, and the trip. And they, they was wanting to give me, like, eight grand for it. Eight grand? Yeah, it was like six or eight grand. And you still decided to come here? Yeah. For $8,000. It's like a car. Yeah. yeah and then people always bugging you when they found out that you're going? Yeah, they were going to kill me. <laughs> like they didn't want you to go. No, I couldn't leave the house. They was all going to run me over with cars, hit me with sticks, shoot me, stab me. But did they do that kind of stuff before also, or is this just something new? Well, now it's just a reason they have. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> when they did it, they just didn't have a reason. So what do you think about the guys from Metallica? Uh, they're all real cool. Uh, I was surprised that they were so cool. They're all down to earth. Yeah. And, yeah. 
They having a pretty good time? Yeah, I'm having a real Enjoying good time. San Francisco? Yeah, I am. You, you've never even been out of Ohio, huh? Uh, not really. All right, well, say hi. You want to say hi to anybody in Ohio right now? Uh, hi, Mom. Uh, all my friends. Hi. There you go. We'll be back with more Metallica. Binging and purging with Metallica. <laughs> Metallica there, kind of behind. Now, how long has it been since you guys have actually played together? Long. <laughs> it's been, what, about seven months? <laughs> July 4th, July 4th last year. Did you kind of miss just stuff like getting in a room and jamming together? No. Not at all. No. <laughs> actually, you dreaded, you dreaded the fact that we actually brought you out of bed to, to get together and <laughs> yeah. play again. I, know, I thought I had a year off, you know. Yeah, I always get talked into this stuff. I you thought you had a year off about... Yeah. Two months ago when you came to Headbangers Ball to talk about the video. Frightening, frightening. No, it's cool. It's, uh, we're hanging at Jason's pad. You know, uh, this is me and James' first time out here. Got his drums. And we're just going to have a little bash here with uh, BJ, DJ, RJ, RJ and PJ. Or, yeah, somebody. It'll be cool, man. Um, have a little fun. You know, one of the things that, I've, beer, that I've said to you a couple times, because I saw them, that like those guys, BJ and PJ, were like freaking when they were walking in here and going, oh my God, we're in the same room with Metallica. But the thing so, is... So was I, because I've never been here before. <laughs> I was freaking too when I walked in. But, but one of the things is, for fans that like of Metallica, they don't look at you guys like you guys are just like out there and they can't relate. I mean, even though you've sold over 12 million records worldwide with the last album, they still feel like they can kind of relate to you. Well, I'd like to think so. I mean, it's all in the attitude. Just sell a lot of records or you play all these mega gigs or whatever. I mean, if you keep the attitude a pretty level thing, then I think you're okay. And I, somehow we've been lucky enough to pull that off so far. So, uh, <laughs> so, but one more record sounds 12 million. I don't know. They're out of here. They're out of here. Okay, we'll be back with more Headbangers Ball hanging out with Metallica. <laughs> Okay. Welcome back to the ball. Right now I'm hanging out with Kirk. And you are on vacation. I mean, you played three years nonstop. Now, how often do you still pick up a guitar? I try to pick up a guitar every day, whether I do or not. It's a different question altogether. Mm -hmm. You know? But uh, I, I, I've, been, I've been dabbling with other types of music. i playing a lot of jazz and blues and stuff. Because that's like how to polish up by listening to some of like the legendary masters, right? Absolutely. And like, um, you know, it's just more of a, a hobby thing for me, playing jazz stuff. It's a new thing. Can you ever see yourself like maybe breaking off for a bit and doing some kind of maybe solo jazz blues type record? Uh, in about yeah, 40 years? Uh, yeah, maybe when, when I'm like... <laughs> You're uh, big, old, and fat. Uh, maybe when I'm just too old to, to get on a tour bus. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You know it all depends on uh, my, how my rheumatism is going to be. Yeah. Does listening to some of the old players help you, you think, improve with some of the styles that you're playing? Uh, absolutely. Like, I, I like, who are some of the people that you listen to? Because maybe there's some guitarists, obviously, that listen to you as, uh, you know, as this is the guy I want to listen to him play guitar. Who are some of the people that you listen to? I listen to Jimmy, Steve Ray Vaughan, Buddy Guy, John the Hooker, uh, Jimmy Martin. Jimmy Martin. <laughs> yeah, he's, well, he's the old school, too. Uh, and, you know, a lot of new players too, like this guy named Dave Hole, who's like an 
incredible guitar player. And, um, and just about anything that catches my ear, I listen to. Was the last time you picked up a guitar and played a Metallica song, July 4th, when you played? You know, I was, uh, I was trying out a guitar at some guitar store, and some kid came up to me and said, hey, play Nothing Else Matters, and I forgot how to play it. <laughs> so it's pretty embarrassing. So there you go. <laughs> we'll be back with more Headbangers Ball. <laughs> Here, hanging out with Metallica. Now you guys haven't all gotten back here. Look, first time, Lars sitting behind drums in a long time. Behind the I mean, have you been spending much time practicing at all, like even by yourself? Yeah, I'll, I'll fiddle with some new amps that come out and remember try to remember some chords and stuff. Were there any songs on the whole three-year tour that you didn't do that you wished you would have performed live? No, we pretty much did all the ones we liked playing even though most of the people didn't like everything we played. Too bad. And, and out of all the songs that you played, which one would you say you're probably the sickest of doing right now? Uh, Entering of the Sandman. Is that because that was the most successful song? Would you agree with that? Most successful or the one that you're sick of playing? Which question? I said, is that's what he said, the most got sick of playing Enter Sandman more than playing any of the songs. Um, I mean, yeah, I got... I, I like playing it every time, but it did get it did get old. There's songs that I'd rather play. Nathan likes everything. Like, yeah, I, I like the thing the thing that should not be or something like that. I would rather play the Inner Sandman at this point while we're standing right here. You know, if if we could still play it while we were standing right here, but I like it better than Sand. You feel a little bit rusty. Excuse me. You feel a little bit rusty. My so on Metallica songs. On Metallica songs, yeah. Overall, not really, no. Okay, we'll let you play, and this is the first time these guys have played together for See, there you go. since July. Hear, I hear. Entering in the Sandman, trying to get, and a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. If it sounds bad, just blame it on other people. Metallica. <laughs> So how you feeling? Look at this. You got a guitar. You're in the room with Metallica. Look at that. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling real excited. This is like Hold on. Put your hand out like this. Let me see your hand. Let me see. Let's get a little bit of shaking. 
A little bit of shaking, a little bit nervous. Yeah. I'm I mean, do you ever nervous. think uh, you're about to play what song? Uh, Seek and Destroy. Right? How many other Metallica songs do you know how to play? None. Okay, that, that, yeah. that, that, that's probably my number one Metallica <laughs> song. So, so you're feeling pretty good here. Stand right up there. No, wait. Here, don't stand on my Don't head. stand up there. Watch out, watch out, because right when the drum kicks in, the pyro goes off right up there. So you got to watch out for the pyro. Watch out for the pyro. Huh? Okay, well, here's BJ playing with Metallica. at the John Stewart Show. Just ducky. It's an evening and day with Metallica, and this is the winner of Binge and Purge with Metallica. And are you having a pretty good time, BJ? Yeah, I'm having a real good time. And it's kind of fun. It's like watching a garage band sit and play Metallica songs, but it's actually Metallica doing them. I mean, and he's been teaching you, giving you a little bit of pointers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think, BJ? Got any talent, Kirk? Yeah. Yeah. Killer. Okay, well, we're going to let them play right now. We'll be back with more Headbangers Ball, hanging out with Metallica. about to leave here and we're gonna go out to dinner with these guys and you know what you're gonna get there right yeah what probably a beat what probably a beaten a what a beaten yeah. a beaten and maybe a road case and uh probably get to pick up the bill too so right now let's watch metallica with the metallitones Once again, right now, we're with our uh, contest winner. This is our old buddy, BJ, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on, on TV. And anyway, even though already you've gotten more than any human should possibly get, these guys are going to give you more. They're going to give oh, you more. Man. So, Lars, tell them what we're going to bring in. Go ahead and bring it in. You're gonna, first of all, you're going to pick up the bill for everybody that ate dinner tonight. Oh, all right. And <laughs> tell me what this is. A big box of metallic krill. This is the real road case you guys brought on the road. Now open it up, see what's inside. Come on now. And hurry up because it might be breathing still. Careful, careful. Oh. Okay, now search in there, search in there, because I think there's some, some cool stuff all hidden in there. Open this thing. See if it's what's in here. Ow. <laughs> Open this thing up. See what's in here. Hey! Wait, 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 wait! Show this, show this. You, you want to show everybody this? Look at this. This man is so lucky. He has a piece of our stage. Yeah. Whoa, right, look at that. Uh oh. Piece of the stage. <laughs> this is also what he gets. A full, a full collar pin-up of Joey Tempest. Huh? 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 Uh, this is like the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, I've been treated like a king. Tony took care of me. Everybody took care of me, and y'all, all y'all are great. They're all just great. They're, they're just great people. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. 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 From Ohio, and you thought that was it? There's, <laughs> there's, a, even these guys don't know. What do you mean? Well, you mean there's wait, more? there's one more thing that you get that we forgot more to even give you. It throat. cuts, yeah. it slices, it does, but it also face. does more. Again? Just when you you thought that was it, huh? you got a really big cardboard box. Man, I don't even have one. Oh, cool. hey, 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 this is your side. This is your side, right here. Come on, boys. Come there you on. go. That's it. There you go. Whoa! Nice. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Name right there. Turn around. Let's everybody see your face. This is the face I made when I looked at it, and I'm still making it now, so <laughs> hold on a second. He's having a good time. Check it out. We have contests like this on MTV pretty much all the time. We're going to have another one. We're going to have one with Pantera. Now, if you want to find out all the details about Pantera's contest, Pantera's going to be our guest on the Headbangers Ball next Saturday night. I mean, look at this guy. He's had a pretty good night. Wait till you hear about the Pantera contest. Check it out. Now, I know that there's Metallica fans all over the world that have been putting out, like, their own Metallica fanzines. Well, right now, Metallica's got their first, like, authorized fanzine. It's called So What? It's the Metallica Club Magazine. The first issue's out now. I've been looking at it. It's very, very cool. It's got a list of all the different Metallica records. You'd be surprised. It also tells you about some of the bootleg records that you could never, ever get. And uh, this is written by the fans, for the fans, and it's got some really cool Metallica stuff. Now, if you want to get this, let me give you an address to write to. It's the Metallica Club, P.O. Box 18327, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37928-2327, USA. And uh, you can find out about how to join the Metallica Club and get So What? This is the first issue, and it's really, really killer stuff for you Metallica fans. Remember, next Saturday, we've got Pantera on the Headbangers Ball, and we'll find out about that Pantera contest. want to thank the winner, BJ, and his friend, PJ. want to, of course, thank Metallica, thank Electra Records, thank... Uh, Tony for hanging out with us and see this 12 million records not everybody's got one of these huh? <laughs> probably not everybody in the band has even got one of these I'm Ricky Rackman I'll see you next Saturday remember to keep one foot in the gutter one fish in the gold <laughs> Oh, yeah.
There's a rumor coming around, got a chair out of town, I'm smelling like a traffic phone. Here come the law, gonna break down the door, gonna tell me away when it's more. 